Welcome to the Master Books Podcast, where we bring you conversations that will strengthen your biblical worldview and the faith of your family. I'm Jennifer White, publicist at Master Books, a division of New Leaf Publishing Group. As host of this show, I'll be opening the doors to the Master Books family library of books, authors, and curriculum. For over 45 years, our company has been about one thing, ink on paper to touch eternity. In a world increasingly at war with God, we are publishing to partner with you to disciple your family, the church, and the nations. Well, hello and welcome, everyone. I am back with another great show. Melanie Utley, the curriculum author of Living Healthy, is with me today. And I have had the best time talking with her behind the scenes, just learning about her life, learning about why she wrote this curriculum and how it's going to help you and your family. And by the way, I would love to hear if you've already been using Living Healthy and how it's working for your family. I was reading the reviews this morning, Melanie, and I loved hearing how even one of the daughters of the reviewers talked about, she talked about how her daughter wanted to lead the physical education and wellness part of their um, homeschool. And so she was using your book, The Daughter Was, to lead the family. Wow, that is awesome. Well, thank Isn't you for that. I that. love that. I have a heart for these kids, and I just really hope that this is a an avenue that the Lord uses he me is. to get this information into their hearts. Absolutely, he is. So we're so glad Melanie's with us. She's got a lot of wisdom to share. We've got a very special show lined up for you. So lean in. This is going to be all about health, all about motherhood, discipling, and um, some really neat stories about how Melanie used, uh, wrote this curriculum from a mom's heart. So you're going to love it. So Melanie, we want to start today's um, podcast and talk a little bit about how this curriculum is written to help the mother, to help the homeschool teacher, whether it's the mother or the father, or the grandparent, whomever's teaching, to help the child win in life. And also to help the parent disciple their children in a way that honors the Lord. So give us a little bit on how you designed it to do exactly that. Okay, sure. So in reality, this book is two parts. Okay. We want to teach the kids about health, but we also want to touch their hearts. So as an added part in the book is our daily walks with your parent. 20 minute walks and re in reality that is an investment in your relationship i put that in there as a gift consider it a gift daily 20 minute walks give them an opportunity for discipleship mm -hmm. use that time to whisper god's truth to their heart this just is so close to me because it's important to me and my children deuteronomy 6 7 tells us to talk when we walk along the road Yes. This is really an opportunity to talk this 20 minutes. You can talk about everything or you can talk about nothing, but it's a relationship builder. <clears throat> when I, when I'm walking with my girls, I have seven kids, five boys and two girls seems to be the girls that want to walk with me the most, Okay, walk the most. But I think about Jesus as a traveling man. Just think about him walking. Did they only, did he only talk to the disciples when they got to their destination? I doubt it. There was a conversation and a relationship building along the way. And that is what this is an opportunity for. Kingdom work may be disguised as exercise. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so think about the walks as an opportunity. Okay. So the second benefit is to encourage the kids to take initiative to make healthy choices for themselves. Health is really, I see it as a life skill. It's not necessarily a subject matter. It's a life skill. They will carry it with them for the rest of their lives. So in our family, <laughs> you start to do laundry, your own laundry when you're eight. So the story will be passed down forever that our oldest, the first time he did his laundry, he used bleach. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> you know what? I didn't fuss at him. I'm like, oh, look at that. This one is the right one, remember? So the story is passed down. He messed up his favorite shirt, 
But you know what? It's a life lesson and none of his siblings will use bleach <laughs> because they know that story. So your health is also a life lesson. At this stage, they are open. <clears throat> it's, it's just a perfect developmental stage to learn about making wise choices. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes we make wise choices and sometimes our choices are not so wise. But this is a great stage to learn how to practice making wise choices. Um, and it reminds me, none of us are perfect. And I don't want any kid using this book to feel like they have to be perfect that they have to do the exercises perfectly, that they have to answer everything and get 100%. That's not right. what it's about. It is um, so much more than that. And they just need to realize, you know, if we were perfect, we wouldn't need Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I remind some of, one of my perfectionist kids, if, she, if you were perfect, you wouldn't need Jesus. So that is not what this is about. It's about making choices and building relationships. It's beautiful. So tell us a little bit about the three, there are three different types of health involved in the book. I think in the subtitle, you it actually sure. tells what you're covering in the curriculum. Can you see that? There we go. Living healthy, nutrition, exercise, and making wise choices. Got so it. So really making wise choices is the underlying theme in this book. Yes, it's health, but it's also making wise choices. And what a terrific way to disciple your child to make great choices that helps them throughout their life to steward their body to the glory of the Lord. This gift of a body, this tent where the Holy Spirit will dwell or does dwell to um, to honor it. And I was convicted behind the scenes before we started this uh, conversation together. We had a little talk about coffee. I'm on my third cup today. And so Melanie was educating me about some things that probably were, you know, a God appointment for me to know yeah. why I need to stop drinking it so much. I'm sorry, but I'm glad I could be used. You were very useful. And I believe you're going to be so useful this in this curriculum. You've already helped many families. And I hope that because of the conversation we're having today, many more families will dive into this curriculum with their families. Tell everybody what age groups um, you've written this for. This is for grades fourth through six. Okay, fourth through six. I did read in the reviews of it that many families were extending it to um, a larger range and using it with younger, their younger students as well. Right. And I will say, and now um, this is my family and I'm mm -hmm. the mom, so I make the rules, right? Okay. <laughs> so for my high school daughter, mm -hmm. she will be using this for half a credit. Okay. And let's see, I have it here somewhere, but in addition to reading the book, she will be taking a first aid class. Mm -hmm. She's already done a stop the bleed class. She will be writing a paper for every unit about one of the subjects in that unit. And she will be making a meal. Right now she makes something once a week that's for her. Mm -hmm. That is a completely perfectly healthy meal. But she will be that will be transferred to making it for our whole family. And the requirement is a protein and either two vegetables or a protein and a fruit and a vegetable. And so that is going to be for her high school health credit. And I'll, I'll be giving it as a half a credit. Wonderful. But I'm the mom, so I make the rules on that one. Right. Well, thank you for giving us options of how different um, families with different age children could modify this. That's genius. Right. And of and course, since you're the mom and the curriculum author, you are the genius. Yeah. Well, get to do that. I say also, I have little boys mm -hmm. and this would be just fine to read aloud to my little boys. Mm -hmm. um, our little boys are, let's see, six and eight. Mm -hmm. I would read this aloud. I think they would enjoy it. I wouldn't make them do any pencil work, mm -hmm. but I think it is appropriate also for that age group. Okay, perfect. All right, now we get to the heart of the story about what inspired you to write this curriculum and how do you see it as a ministry to the families of Masterbooks? Okay, this is a long story that I will try to make into a short story. Okay. But our path, it's an ongoing path that the Lord put us on. And I'm sure all of us can look back in our lives and see the path and go, thank you, Lord, I didn't know it, but thank you. <laughs> So I began teaching aerobics and was certified as a personal trainer at age 17. Okay. 
I met my husband at a different gym. I pay. I made money at one gym. I paid to go to another gym where he worked. <laughs> and I met him there. And Sweet. he had just finished his master's in kinesiology. So we got married and we moved to Fort Benning, Georgia, where he worked with the U.S. Army Physical Fitness School as an instructor. Okay. During that time, I worked at a, I'm not going to drop her name, but a bodybuilding gym mm -hmm. as a trainer. The owner was a six-time Miss Olympian. So we're talking about the real deal. Okay. Um, and I love that experience, but I, I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. So after that job, we, um, I was able to get back into school. So overall, it took me nine years to finish my degree because at that time I was also starting to have babies. And my degree was dietetics. <laughs> and I loved it because I love food and I love all the possibilities with food. Mm -hmm. So my husband got a job, was being, we were being moved to Washington, D.C. He was going to work in the Pentagon and I had two classes left to get my degree. Okay. So my two remaining classes were how to design a hospital kitchen and a, another chemistry. But what do you do? So I just said, okay, can you give me a degree with where I'm at? So I took a degree in family and consumer science. Mm -hmm. So do I wish I still had that dietetics degree? Yes, I do. But I'm going to be happy with the path the Lord gave me and just be okay with it. So um, from there, our kids got bigger. And we have one guy, let's see, my husband was deployed, he was in Iraq, and this one guy, whenever he would drink Sprite, he became an absolute nightmare. Oh. Yes. And so my husband was deployed, you know, he wasn't there to see this. And I'm just saying, here's what's going on. I don't know what to do. This is crazy. Um, so I narrowed it down to the Sprite. Mm -hmm. Turns out those preservatives in the Sprite or giving him troubles. He could drink Sierra Mist, but he couldn't drink Sprite. That's fascinating. Yes. So um, later on, we were stationed at Fort McCoy, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And in that house, we had a small schoolroom. Um, and one morning, I got a water bottle in one of those little crystal light packets. And I put it in there, I shook it up, walked into the room, started drinking. And 20 minutes later, I became the Incredible Hulk. This is really hard for me to admit that uh -huh. I was ever this ugly. This wasn't me. This is what the food coloring did to me. I think I threw a chair. Oh, my. Exactly. Honestly, there was nothing wrong. My kids were fine. We're doing what we're supposed to be doing. But I felt a heat over come over my body and a rage. And I didn't know what to do with it. And as an adult, that really opened my eyes as to, wow. What are we doing to our kids? Mm. Imagine a child feeling that heat and rage that I felt and not knowing what to do with that. You know, here I'm an adult. I was able to get myself under control, but I had that experience and it really made me start thinking about what we were doing to ourselves and to our children. So <laughs> I told you it's a long story. I'll try to shorten it. Um, we have a child that our second son had horrible eczema. Come to find out dairy. Um, now he can put away two gallon jugs in a week of raw local milk okay. and it doesn't bother him. It's in the, the processing. He can't handle the processed dairy, but this is a path. I didn't know it back then. Mm -hmm. So it's a path that the Lord puts us on. So we move here and we have three more little boys. Those little boys were, two of them were very, very sick as infants up until about two years old. They cannot have grain, dairy, egg, or soy. Whoa. And it's not that it's an allergy. It's that their gut biome cannot tolerate it. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> and then we have kids that have, uh, we've done homeschool cross country. And my husband and I were both coaches. That was a lot of fun. Um, our kids have run 5Ks on their own. They go to gym on their own. Um, I've got one that's out there working out on her own right now. So it's really a lifestyle and we grow a lot of our own food because we know what's in it. Right. So all of that to give you my history and tell you why I wrote this book mm -hmm. and how I got here. So why I actually wrote this book was for my daughter, Sarah Catherine. 
Okay. She is the girl that you see doing the exercises in the book. Now, let me tell you, this, this is my firecracker kid. <laughs> and I got lots of faces. <laughs> and we had a lot of fun when she was um, doing these pictures. Here's just a simple one of a, let me see, which way? Basketball there toss. There we go. Okay. So my Sarah Catherine, when I wrote this, it was two years ago. She was 10 years old. She is my baker. She mm -hmm. loves to turn her loose in the kitchen, and she's a happy child. Um, but she needed guidance on how to move forward in her in her maturing to make healthy choices. Okay. So this is a conversation. If I could sit down with Sarah Catherine on the couch, these are the things that, as her mama, I want her to know. Um, and it goes back also to that Deuteronomy 6, 7. I want to walk and talk and be guided by the Holy Spirit to give her the information she needs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the subject matter in this book is the stuff I could talk about in my sleep. It's it's my past and my history, my education, my real life application. I know it like, like the back of my hand. Sure. But I just had to pray, Lord, show me how to get this in a format for these children to reach their hearts. So you ask my inspiration. It's really just letting the Lord use me to get this information out and also to touch Sarah Catherine's heart. Wow. Well, I love that you were inspired to share it with your daughter. And all of us can relate to um, the joy of baking and eating the baked goods. <laughs> yes. Well, and you know, that's something that Sarah Catherine had to learn. Um, just this week, she wanted to bake something I'm like, sure, whatever, you know, clean it up. Um, so she made cupcakes mm -hmm. and I'm, this is what happens every time. That's great. I'm encouraging her interest. So I bet she probably ate three or four cupcakes. Her teenage brothers probably each had one. My husband probably had one. No one else will touch them. In about three days, I'm going to put them in a baggie and put them in the freezer. No one will eat them and I'll end up feeding them to the chickens. So it's a lesson in, yes, of course you can bake what you want but make wise choices. Right. So you're teaching her and the whole family portion control, allowing her to have the opportunity to do what it, she enjoys right. and, and, and then helping the family not continue to eat the sugar. Mm -hmm. I, I want to encourage her and not squish her joy. Right. But I think she is, she's learning and they're in this developmental stage, mm -hmm. but they're learning and they're you're not going to get perfect, And that's okay. Yeah, you're being a great shepherd of her body and her mind. And in writing this curriculum, I see you helping shepherd the shepherds, shepherd the parents as they disciple their children and how to make wise choices, why the why behind the wise choices. And that's something that Megan, one of the reviewers said, she said she and her family, they work out as a group. And that sounds delightful to me. And she said, there's only one of her sons that gives her pushback about working out. She said, but this course, Living Healthy, was helping her son understand the why behind it. And sometimes there are children who just have to know the why. Yes. And, and really, there's a difference between doing it because mama said so and knowing the why behind it. Because later when they have the freedom to make their own choices, of what to buy and what to cook and what to eat. If they don't know the why, and it's just because mama said who, what child is going to do that? You know, it's, it's just going to be what's fun and what's yummy and Doritos yes. all the way. This is a great age for them to start taking on that responsibility, that ownership mm -hmm. of knowing why and wanting to steward their bodies. Absolutely. So one of the things you and I were talking about earlier is that every family situation is both similar and unique. So, you know, we've all got, um, you know, foods that we love. Uh, we're either very active or very sedentary or it comes and it goes and we go through challenges. And so you've already addressed some of the challenges that your own family has walked through and the need to help them make wise choices. But I want you to take a few minutes to encourage 
the homeschool mom that's listening, she's busy, a little bit overwhelmed, and the thought of dealing with the special needs of each one of her children and teaching them healthy choices might just feel like a little too much. How would you encourage them and how will this curriculum help them? Right. Okay. This one speaks to my heart. This is my life. <laughs> um, I will start off with what you cannot do, God can. Mm -hmm. So homeschooling in general, no matter typical, atypical, wherever your kids lie, whatever you can't do, God can. So I think you need to acknowledge that and hand that over. You're going to do your best mm -hmm. at your job and know that he is going to cover the rest. Okay. Um, this is a place for grace and encouragement. Mm -hmm. And that's what the moms need to know. It's a place for grace and encouragement for both of them and their kids. So I'll preface this also by saying I have kids with ADHD, OCD, dyslexia, profound dyslexia, um, speech therapy issues, and Down syndrome. Wow. So you speak to my life. <laughs> How mm -hmm. can we make this work for our situation? Mm -hmm. So as a mom, I address the issue. So is it um, with my dyslexic kids? Is it, you know, the reading or is it the comprehension? Whatever, if, if it falls in that, I would like to look at it and say, okay, I'm going to read this aloud to you. And then can you tell me back what you heard? Okay. They're still listening. Right. Um, my, one of my dyslexics is his strength is auditory. So he can listen to anything and get it. Okay. So figure out their strengths and work towards their strengths. Um, but that narrating back, I love that in the Charlotte Mason flair, the narration back, mm -hmm. they, they have to process it. That is harder than you think it is. If you try to narrate, um, it's really a skill. If it's a physical issue, take a picture of the exercise mm -hmm. and show it to your physical therapist and say, hey, we really want to do this. Do you have ideas on how we can modify this to make this work for us? Oh, good. And then um, if it's a attention issue, which I've got one of those too, you have to, I appreciate the Charlotte Mason flair again, because the mm -hmm. lessons are short, short and with the activity. If they can make it through, say, five to 10 minutes of paying attention, Mm -hmm. Then we have the exercises. So it's a it's a building up of their skill set as well, but it's not asking too much. I think they can do it, especially if mom is positive. So right. that's the big kicker here. If mom is positive, the kids feed on your attitude. So with my um, now 19 year old, he was profoundly dyslexic. Okay. His older brother had learned to read at age four mm. using a very traditional curriculum. And when I tried it on the second kid, it was a disaster. At fourth grade, what would be fourth grade, he still couldn't remember the word the. Mm -hmm. He knew no words. I had to get out of that mindset of you can't do this. What's wrong with you? And get into, okay, let me see what your strengths are. And we're going to work on it that way because God didn't make you to feel bad about yourself. Mm -hmm. So we're going to build you up to be who you are and who you're created to be. And we went with his strengths and that kid, he could outread me now by far, but it was a process. And I feel like if I had kept being negative with him, he would have lost his love for learning but now he is the kid that goes to the college library and comes home with a stack of books like this big. That's amazing. And it really yes. speaks to, Randy talks about this often, that the homeschool curriculum is the tool and the parent is the carpenter. And we give you the tools and the master books method really has um, the design, makes the design of the tools to be very helpful in brain development and um helping make sure that we are teaching on a level that the child's brain is ready to receive. But then you, the parent, knowing the individual needs of your family and each individual student can take living healthy, the same curriculum and make it work for your different students because you know what they need. And I love your encouragement to parents to just not focus on the negative, but where are their strengths? 
And I think that's kind of been a theme of today's um, podcast and a few of the others that we've had recently that l- allow your weaknesses to be the platform for what God can and will do for you. If you get out of yourself and like, I can't do this and just say, please come and let your sufficiency you know, rest on my weakness here or this situation that could make my child feel weak and and build us up, Lord. He's made us to be more than conquerors. I love that. Yes, there's so much potential in our children if we build them up in what the Lord has for them mm-hmm. instead of building, a, pulling them down so yes. we can move them forward in the Lord's path and making wise choices and starting, especially at this age, with ownership of their body and making wise choices. And I'll tell you that speaking of ownership, um, there's a lesson in the book that I love. (laughs) I just have to say that. And I'm going to give you, here it is, right? Nope. I'm going to give you a little information about it. This lesson is about Sarah Catherine. She's Mm -hmm. not a hugger. And then her bubble is really big. Okay. And she had, has friends that hug. And it makes her very uncomfortable. So there's even a lesson on personal boundaries. We use that as an example of helping Sarah Catherine determine her boundaries as far as physical touch. Okay. So I think parents should know that this is a, this goes beyond, you know, carbs and proteins. Mm -hmm. But these are the things that they need to know in life, like as in setting my personal boundaries. And so the activity is to talk with their parents. Mm -hmm about how do you feel about personal boundaries with your family, you know, your friends, strangers, and so forth, and to establish those right now at this developmental age where they're old enough to understand and process and start to learn from it. So I just want to bring that to your attention because this is a, the Lord gave me this Mm -hmm. and I felt like that was just a lesson that needed to be included. And I hope it touches some lives and helps children. You know it will. That will apply to any child, whether they're the hugger that has friends that don't want to be hugged or the opposite, you know, right. and, and that will that will help them in so many different relationships with their peers, but also older adults and in their dating and all the things. So thank you for listening to the Holy Spirit. Thank you for writing this curriculum and allowing master books to bring it to the families that we serve so that the wisdom God gave you and the path he took you on now has become a meal for the rest of the master books family. We really appreciate that. And, and the scriptures that you have woven into the lessons as well as just being led by the Lord to address specific things that you wouldn't normally find in a typical health curriculum. Yeah. Yes, I I did look at other brands of health curriculum Mm -hmm. and I thought, you know, these are great things, but I want to touch the heart of what the Lord wants for them in their health and in their lives. Thank you for that. That really helps me and the listener know about the biblical worldview that is woven into this particular um, curriculum that can be used for your whole family, not just your children, but the parents get involved in it as well. And I think it could be a lot of fun. So for those of you who haven't seen Living Healthy yet, I'm going to put a link to the book in our show notes so that you can check it out. You can read the reviews. You can download a free sample so you can see what is covered, all the topics that are covered and how it's laid out. Thank you so much, Melanie, for spending your morning with me. And I've really enjoyed getting to know you. And I'm thankful now that the moms of master books and their families can get to know you through this podcast. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I love sharing my heart for kids and I hope that moms also feel that and are encouraged. Yes. I can't imagine that they wouldn't be encouraged today. And so I do want to pray for you today as we close this out that you, the homeschool parent listening today, um, the person who loves their family, has been filled with the love of God, shed abroad by the Holy Spirit in your heart, that you would be encouraged and empowered 
to, to know that you are more than a conqueror as a mom, as a parent, as a teacher, and that you are with your children to help them see the Lord work through their weaknesses and make them literally strong in their bodies, strong in their minds, and strong in the relationship with the Lord. And with that, we say thanks for joining us and goodbye and amen. Hey, thanks for joining the Master Books podcast. This was fun, and we are really glad you were with us. We invite you to check out masterbooks.com. We have a big library of books that will feed the faith of your family. And hey, subscribe to our channel so you won't miss an episode. We'll see you next time.